another opportunity for the privilege to speak to your people. But God, they didn't come to hear and see me, but they came to hear and see you. So Lord, hide me in that shadow. Lord, consecrate me now to thy service. So that, Lord, you receive all the honor and glory due unto your name. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See, as I'm standing here, I'm centering myself. Because I realize that apart from him, I can do nothing. I've been fighting with something all week long. And I say something because I can't put a name other than something. In preparing for today, I've been tossing back and forth, back and forth. But I didn't count any of this strange because I often toss back and forth when it comes to the Lord. But today is just an unusual day for me. Just because there's something going on. But I'm prayerful today, and I'm thankful today, that there is a blessing in the push. Amen. Because you don't understand, I really was contemplating whether or not I was even coming to the house today. I was really contemplating whether or not I was going to have to make that call and say, no, Pastor, not me, not today. But somewhere around the seventh hour, yes, yes. the Lord said, no, get up. Yes. Get dressed. Go to church. And even still on my way here, something still was going on. But when I got to the church house, when I came in the building, my strength started to come back. Even in the study as I'm looking at pastor and pastor is looking at me and questioning in his mind like, okay, are you all right? What's going on? Now is the time to speak. I said, no, I got to go. I'm all right. I'm fine. I will carry on. See, it's something about being in the fellowship of like believers. Because they might not understand all of your praise, but they have a praise on their lips that can say, thank you, Lord, for bringing me a mighty long way. See, I'm just going to be with you only a little while, but I had to acknowledge the God of my salvation. The healer of this body. My strength and my redeemer. I had to come and tell the Lord thank you just for restoration. You might not can tell it like I can tell it. But every now and then we have some days that we aren't 
quite sure of. Amen. Every now and then, time comes when we want to question God. But today is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, yes. Right. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The scripture lesson has already been read for your hearing this morning, and I just want to lift up one verse. Coming from Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And the 11th verse. <coughs> Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not lose heart and grow weary. The subject is not printed in your bulletin, but the subject is simply this, remain in the race. Amen. Remain in the race. One thing is for certain, either you're running to something or from something. Either for something or against. It seems as though we're always running. We're good at running against time, wishing there were more hours in a day. We're good at running from one thing to another, going to work, picking up kids, taking care of loved ones, getting to practices, rehearsals, and the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. We're even good at running with the Joneses and remember it's not my beloved Devon. <laughs> but because we run that race, it's why we have so much stuff now collecting dust. Mm -hmm. We all fall victim to this human race, including myself. Don't get me wrong, it's not all bad because some are necessary to survive. But in all of this running, where are you going? Oftentimes we forget our way. We allow the ways of this world to distract us from our real reason of living. But for us, we serve a true and living God whose purposes we are to fulfill. So I remind you to remain in the race. For when you remain in the race, we have to center our lives on Christ. Understand that this Christian race isn't a 50-yard dash. It isn't a hit it or quit it. It's not a sprint or even walk a mile but a cross-country, state, and city expedition all together. See, this race involves you focusing and directing your life on God and his will by establishing and maintaining a relationship with him. Remember the words of John 15, Abide in me and I in you. For several weeks now, I've been talking about living a life to God. See, centering our lives on God established that relationship that you set aside each time and every day you commune with the Savior. It's allowing God to talk to you even in a small, still voice. It allows you to talk to him, for remember, we no longer live under the law, but by grace, which allows us to go straight to him and he to us. And the more he talks, the closer we draw near, and the more he speaks, the closer we get. So the more that he talks, the more that we commune, and the more that we commune, the closer we draw unto him. 
So I come to tell you to remain in the race. Where are you going? If we're going to continue to run this race, we have to know that we have to commit to the cause. Look here at verse 1 and 2. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. You see, this Christian life is hard. It requires us to give up whatever entangles our relationship with God, to run with endurance, and to struggle against sin with the power of the Holy Spirit. To live effectively, we must keep our eyes stayed on Jesus. This race is to say that we will lose our way, yes. Is it to say that we battle against the flesh? we will surely stumble and fall. It says that absolutely. But even when we fall and even when we stumble, we serve a God that will clean us up and renew a right spirit within us. Amen. See, commitment is a word that often we aren't ready for. Most men in a relationship will tell you that, mm, okay, let's wait a while. But we want the blessing. But we don't want the testing. Mm -hmm. See, committing your life to God will involve you making sacrifices. Uh -huh. No longer do you belong to yourself or to the wiles of the world, but you have been bought with a price. You have been redeemed by the God of our salvation, not to live a life to the flesh, but to live unto the Spirit. This commitment may mean that you have to give up some things. It means that you might have to sacrifice just a little bit. But the most sacrificial thing is your life. Are you giving him your life? If not, then where are you going? Because there are times in this race where we will have to let go of some things. There are times in this race where even the closest ones and the most dear to us have to go. Because you have to understand that the more you draw to him, and the more he draws to you, not everybody is destined to meet you at your end. Amen. Amen. Commitment is a word that often we aren't ready for. But if we're going to remain in the race, we have to understand that we have to commit to the cause. Because if God committed to the cause, then what say we? Do we just give in? Do we just throw in the towel? Do we just walk away? Do we live a life to the flesh or do we live to the spirit? Where are you going? Remember, it's a life for a life. For Romans 12 says to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. A life for a life. He came so that we could be redeemed and be saved through his salvation. So I ask you again, where are you going? But don't lose heart. Just remain in the race. And lastly, if we are to remain in the race, we first have to center ourselves on God. We have to commit to the cause. But then lastly, we have to continue his legacy. A couple of days ago, I had the opportunity to observe the funeral or the homegoing of our Congressman Elijah Cummings. And among all the people that spoke, his daughter, his wife, the former president of the United States, all were saying the same thing. That Elijah lived a life to the people. He lived a life first to God, but then living to God, he served the people. That he wasn't about pomp and stance, that he wasn't so high-minded, that he wasn't so elevated, that he was no earthly good. Everybody 
remain in the race, what legacy is it that we are to live? Mm -hmm. What legacy is it are we going to leave? Mm -hmm. For remember, God came not only to redeem us, but God came to save us. God came in the muck and the mire to pull us out, wash us off and make us clean. So then, what do we live as a legacy unto him? For you see, growing up, our legacy was that we would always be better than our parents. We, would, we wanted to grow up and live a life that was always better than the generation before us. Their legacy was that a better day is coming for you. Just hold on. So then as we live a life to Christ, what is the legacy that we will live and leave for the next? For you understand that this Christian race is not for the now, but it's for what's to come. Mm -hmm. Many will say, well, you know, we leave our children. When we go, we want to leave them well off so that they don't have the struggles that we had along the way. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But then in this legacy, we also, too, have to work at it. We have to put aside, as the Bible says, those weights and things that will easily beset us. Mm -hmm. So what are those things that easily will beset? Is it anger? Is it jealousy? Is it envy? Yes, yes. What are those things that easily beset? Perhaps it's your job. Maybe you're working too much. Perhaps it's your own children loving them more than enough. Perhaps it's your cell phone. Maybe you need to cut it off every now and again. But what is it that is so easily setting us from allowing us to run the race that God wants us to remain in? So I tell you that we have to continue his legacy. Well, what is his legacy? Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. So then what has he commanded you to do? To love your neighbor as yourself. To love God above all because God is a jealous God. Amen. But then it's to help the helpless. Right? Yeah. It's to clothe the naked. Yeah. Ultimately it is to love each and every one. So what legacy is it that you are to live? What legacy are you going to live to lead to the next? We talk about legacy, and we're talking about commitment, and we're talking about centering ourselves on God. But God said, no, don't, don't worry, because if I can do it, so can you. Yeah, they're going to talk about you, but guess what? They talked about me. They thought that I was just merely a carpenter. But I came to give you life and so that you can have life more abundantly. So no, don't worry about it. You just remain in the race. Yes, they're going to criticize you and persecute you for my name's sake. But guess what? They did the same. They said that I am not I am. They said, you know, that I am basically a joke. That I'm some other God. They didn't believe in me. Guess what? They're not going to believe you neither. Mm -hmm. But because you live in me yeah. and I live in you, mm -hmm. remain in the race. Mm -hmm. Keep running. Keep pressing towards the mark. Because eventually the mark is going to come. But remember to stay centered. Remember to commit yourself. And then remember to continue his legacy. So where are you going? Because you're going somewhere. What are you going to leave to this next generation? And how are you living in the now. Mm -hmm. 
Remain in the race. Don't give up. And don't give in. Because God said that in due season, you shall reap what you sow. Amen. 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 As we all 